So this one's already in standard form. So I will write it in standard form. Now, in order to get it in factored form, I obviously need to factor it. Um, I do know when something's to the fourth power, it's like um, x squared, which is a u, which means it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, which means that's going to be going up, which means the domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. I do know the range is going to be y is greater than or equal to, but I just don't know what that is right now. I know the end behavior as x affects negative infinity, f of x. I'm sorry, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches. It's also going up, positive infinity. Okay? So... Now I need to factor. So I have an option. I can either factor it if I know what I'm doing, and I'll show you both. And so I'm going to transfer to another page. So let me show you the factor way. If you have x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 9. So I'm going to factor it. This makes me think of x squared minus 6x plus 9, which is really x minus 3 times x minus 3 which is x minus 3. Well, I won't even get there. But the problem is you have to get it to x to the fourth. So it's really x squared minus 3, x squared minus 3. If I set this equal to 0, I add 3. x squared equals 3. Okay. And obviously I get the same thing here which means I have rad 3 multiplicity 2, which means it's going to bounce. And I have negative rad 3, which is multiplicity 2, which also means it's going to bounce. So if I tried to do this problem, doing the PQ, let's start it with the PQ. So if I do the PQ, and I go 1, I have to account for x cubed, 0 x squared, x, and then a number. And I write down all my possibilities, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. I think you can agree the problem is nothing is going to work. So I cannot do PQ in that case. I want you to be really careful about that one. But I want to point out if you had one like this. Let's say it was x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 5. That would be x squared minus 6x plus 5, which is x minus 1, x minus 5. Then you put in the x squared. This is x minus 1, x plus 1. This ends up giving you x squared minus 5 equals 0. x equals plus or minus rad 5. So my roots would be 1. My root would be negative 1. My root would be rad 5 and my root would be negative rad 5. So for this one, I could do the PQ. So let me just show that really quick. 1, 0, negative 6, 0, 5. My possibilities, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5. So I try 1, bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 0 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, minus 6 is negative 5. 1 times negative 5 plus 0. Boom, that works. There's one of my roots, it matches up there. Negative one, bring down the one. By the way, you could have done factor by grouping, x cubed, x squared, x, and then a number. Now remember, you're looking here. So negative one times one plus one, negative one times zero plus this, boom, that one also works. And then you'd be left with x squared plus zero x minus five, which is x squared minus five, which brings me back to that. So just careful. This is why it's really advantageous to know how to factor. Okay? So now that I know that the answers are plus rad 3 multiplicity 2 and negative rad 3 multiplicity 2, I need to write that um, answer in factored form. Now, let's go back up here. If I'm saying factored form, I do as much as I could to factor. This is solving. So then my answer for factored form is f of x equals x squared minus 3 squared, because it's this times this, which is the same thing.
Okay, the x-intercepts are rad 3 comma 0 and negative rad 3 comma 0. My roots are rad 3 multiplicity 2 um, and negative rad 3 multiplicity 2, which means they both bounce. Okay, I'll make that a little bit bigger, I'm sorry. So, x-intercepts, rad 3, negative rad 3, but I have to put a 0, and the roots are there. Okay. So now the y-intercept, I actually could have done the y-intercept from the beginning. Boom, 0, 9. In order to get the max, the min, the intervals increasing and decreasing, I'm going to quick graph. Okay. Zoom out a little bit. Getting a pen that doesn't work. Okay, now we're using brown. Sorry about that. Now remember, it's a quick graph. So rad 3, negative rad 3, and then positive 9. There's my y-intercept. There's my x-intercept. Okay. If it's x to the fourth, x to the fourth is like x squared, which means it starts from the top. Now I go there, but remember, it's multiplicity 2, which means it's a bounce. And then I go through. And then rad 3 was also a bounce. And there is my rough sketch. This is negative infinity. This is positive infinity. This is the value negative rad 3 comma 0. This is the value rad 3 comma 0. So that when I do my intervals increasing and decreasing, I'm going to focus, oops, 0, 9 on all the x values. So from here to here, it's going down negative infinity comma negative rad 3. From here to here it's going up, negative rad 3 comma 0. From here to here, oops, let's do put it in the up category. From here to here it's going down, 0 comma rad 3. And then from here to here it's going up, rad 3 comma positive infinity. Now for the range we want to look, it's, it's everything from here and going up. So that's the y value at 0. Now we have 0 comma positive infinity. The maximum, if you look, there is no max because it goes up and up and up forever. The minimum, we actually have two minimums. But if we're talking about the minimum, the minimum means the lowest value. Well, it wouldn't be a positive value, so it would be a negative value of negative rad 3 comma 0. That one was definitely a difficult one for sure.